Hey, everybody, and welcome back. It's Inside the Force. Coming at you in July of 2020. It's Dave Cottingham here with Casey Cooley. Hello, everybody. Man, we are halfway <laughs> through this year, Case. Yeah. It's a strange year. <laughs> Feeling normal now doing the show this way. It's starting to feel like this is I know, normal, right? but, you know. Yeah, I mean, God, it's been a long time since we sat yeah. in the same room. It's going to be weird doing that. Uh, yeah. But I can't wait, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can't wait to do that again. Um, thanks, everybody, for getting back to us. We've got a I read some of light show, I feel like, today. Not a lot of news going on in, in the world of Star Wars right now. We're, I think we're all just anticipating some kind of announcement, especially now that, of course, Star Wars Celebration is not happening next month. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get, you know, we've got to get some kind of announcement, I hope. But there are a lot of uh, publications coming out. Comics are returning next uh, next month in August at full, full force. Of course, a lot of novels that we'll mention still coming today, uh, coming out the rest of this year. So a lot of Star Wars stuff still coming. Of course, Mandalorian debuting back in October, but still haven't seen any footage yet for that. Yeah. So we will see, but um, I know Casey hasn't totally dived into it yet, but I started the audio book for Shadowfall, the second of the uh, Alphabet Squadron trilogy. And my preliminary, I'm about, uh, I think I'm four or five chapters in. Uh, my preliminary feeling is relatively the exact same as the first book. Uh, <laughs> It has its ups and downs to me, personally. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I, I, I get what the story is. For some reason, I'm just not that gravitated by the story. Yeah, yeah so, that's fine. I think you had the same feeling of the first book, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I couldn't though, quite put my finger on it. I, I, honestly, I, I'm kind of giving myself the benefit of the doubt, just thinking I was in the wrong environment, like driving long distance, and I was probably oh, just right. tired. I don't know. So. Um, although I, I, I had started it once and then, yeah, kind of didn't, wasn't grasped, wasn't like into it. And then I started it again on this, on, when I was on a road trip and I got through it, but I still at the end was like, don't know what it was, but it didn't quite, you know, it didn't grab me as much. But, um, I mean, the, the, the quality, the production of the audio book, of course, was, was amazing because what I did listen to it, um, I did love all the Hera scenes in the first book. I loved all the scenes between, um, um, oh my gosh, keep on drawing a, uh, a blank Eric, of the main character, Erica Quell. Erica Quell. Erica yeah. Quell. Um, or Erica. Erica Quell. But, uh, and then her, between her and the, uh, her like therapist droid. Yes. Uh, and like those scenes are great. I love those scenes. So, I, but yeah, I guess we are on the same page where I wasn't quite, you know, it's just so many characters. It's kind of like the first Aftermath book. It was like, uh -huh, they just, uh -huh. they try to, they introduce so many characters and it was a big book. So it's like they had plenty of time, but I didn't, nothing quite landed with me, but hate yeah. to hear that the, the second one is, is the same for you. I'm hoping I, I'm hoping that I well, like it. I need I, to read if it anything, it's consistent, right? It's the same writer. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> consistent tone and the way it's written uh, yeah. but you know it's it's an adventure book it's got sure. a lot of uh action well mm -hmm. actually not a lot of action but a lot of setup and a lot mm -hmm. of drama into going into what the action is going to be mm -hmm. um hasn't been that much action that's the thing about yeah. the first first few chapters or whatever but mm -hmm. um but we'll see. I'll I'll get through it. I'll, I'm going to get through it a lot slower. I feel like because I'm because I'm not driving as much yeah. anymore. So right. I'm only getting <laughs> yeah. into it when I'm cutting the grass. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I, mean, I I don't know if it I don't know if it's like because it's a strictly you can call it a war type. No, it's all dogfights. It's all there's no Jedi. Yeah. No Jedi. No Force. No. Um. But so maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know because Alexander Freed. I I enjoyed. 
his Battlefront book, Twilight Company. I enjoyed that quite, I did you too. Know, a bit. You know, cause, but that had different things going for it. Had a lot of nostalgia and how it kind of fit in with other areas like Battle of Hoth and and all that. But um, yeah, and, and I didn't read the, I did not read the Rogue One novelization, so I didn't. Cause I, I did, which did was that. good. It was good. Yeah. I mean, so I, love the I typically movie. like his work. Yeah. But. So, yeah, that's uh, I, f- I forgot he did Twilight Company because uh, Twilight Company I did like it, but it was kind of the same. I could tell it was the mm-hmm. same feeling because there were a lot of a lot of exposition and setup mm-hmm. and and just conversations in uh, in Twilight Company, but there were some ex- c- crazy moments. Mm-hmm. In Twilight Company, especially the scene where Vader comes and uh, raids Echo Base, yes, you know, that a different, was awesome. <laughs> yeah, you get a different perspective, <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I think I'll get there with this. I'm sure, um, but it, it is going to take me a little while. I'm just not as I'm just not driving as much, and I'm not uh, mm-hmm. in the car as much to listen to it straight, but. Um, but it is a long book too. It's a big book. It's fourteen. I think it's fourteen and a half hours is the mm-hmm. audio book, which is pretty long. So, um, so I'll get to it. I'll get to finish it at some point. And then we still got to talk. Uh, we're still setting up some time to talk about uh, Queen's Peril, which with Hannah, because um, mm-hmm. that's that's something we're definitely going to do on one of our other YouTube series. But um, because that is something worthy to talk about. That was really good. That was really good. Um, and then we will talk about here shortly. The Mandalorian's got a a big publishing uh, platform coming uh, of books coming mm-hmm. uh, in a list that we're going to go through. But one thing I did uh, find out just I, a little bit, actually, literally right before we got on here and started recording. For those of you that may or may not care, because you may already have it, but Solo is dropping on Disney Plus tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, July 10th. <laughs> I am actually, even though I have it, I'm actually going to watch it tomorrow Me, on Disney Plus. Yes, <laughs> as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I was sitting here with my daughter, Sam. We we just got done watching Onward again tonight, which is mm-hmm. a great movie. Love it. Um, <laughs> and I happened to say, you know, I was like, I was like, man, what, what day is that coming out? And I, because you can see it already, it says the date on yeah. it. I mean, it says July 10th, so actually it's uh, dropping tomorrow. So for those of you who didn't remember or know and haven't <laughs> bought it yet or been waiting for it, it's coming on Disney Plus tomorrow. I'm, I'm or really right curious now. to see if there's just a dramatic resurgence or new found love for this movie. Because we've talked on the show, especially when Cody's been on, uh, about... You know, would this movie have been better? Would still have been better if it went straight to a streaming service like Netflix? Because maybe you know, because some movies do perform better when they do, you yeah. know, straight. You, you know, than you would think if they did on a theatrical release. But I'm, you know, really hopeful that that Solo will get just this booming support now. Yeah, I think I think Solo is the. I think you're right. I think Solo is the definition of a movie that probably should have been on a mm-hmm. different platform versus a theatrical release. Mm-hmm. And I think mainly, I think two things. I think two things were the um, well, two things would have had to change if they were going to do that. Um, so let's just say, let's just theorize a little bit if they were. If they were planning on, you know, uh, knowing that Disney Plus was coming, mm-hmm. if someone had the the mindset to say, you know what, let's do this. And this is before I think this is even still when Phil, you know, Phil Lord, Chris Miller, and Phil Lord yeah. still had it. Yeah. It, it, let's do this for Disney Plus. Let's save this for the launch of Disney Plus. But I think. I think what would have had to happen was I think the budget would have had to change, you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. the budget they had was a theatrical budget. I mean, they were sure. throwing everything they could at it because movies like that, I think you tend to do them, try to do them for lower budgets and mm-hmm. 
because you're not you're not getting people to pay to see it, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, people are paying this their service, but more awesome. likely you're not gaining that much new viewership. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe you would have in something like this, right? Um, and then they would have justified it, but that therefore the story would have been changed a little bit, I think, because to fit the budget, right? Um, yeah. And then if they would have had the same kind of debacle they did, which they had a director change and then they threw more money at it for reshoots. Um, so I almost think it came ahead of its time Mm -hmm. because right now, if you were going to go do it now, you would probably do it in the vein that they're doing Obi-Wan and Cassian. Mm -hmm. You do like a four or five episode series with, Mm -hmm. with, with Han and Chewie. Right. So, and then again, being a little bit behind now, you can lower it, the budget Mm -hmm. that is, because now you have the volume. Right. And you could do almost any series (laughs) in the volume, right? Which I'm sure they're going to be using for Cassian and for. It'll only get crazier. Yes. Like with Mandalorian, they already had a very impressive scale of the volume. You know, and you can do like 180. I think they had like pretty much like a, maybe even more than 180 degree uh, psych wall essentially of this LED screen. And I don't know, I don't know if they said how how high it was, but you saw it in the galleries that it's a pretty tall thing. You can only imagine that it'll get bigger, bigger. You know, yes, it'll it'll be so, a full size studio. It sounds like, like at some oh point. my gosh, you can, yeah, you can. It's gonna be insane. It's it is going to be insane. The the type the change of movies. how they're going to yeah. get away with it. Yeah. How yeah. Get away with the technology and, and the effects. And yeah, Solo, Solo, I feel like would definitely have been a perfect candidate for, for that technology. Yeah. And I will always, even though I'm a fan of Solo and I'm a mm-hmm. fan of Alden as yeah. Solo. Yeah. Uh, but I do, I still do love the idea of saying, Harrison's my movie solo, Alden's <laughs> my Disney Plus yeah. solo, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, whatever. They, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess you can do that, say that now, right? Solo is going to be on Disney Plus. Yeah. And, yeah. And if they do more with him, it'll probably still stay on Disney Plus. It probably won't mm-hmm. be anything theatrical. Sure. But, yeah. But, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I think, I think if they would have, Look, I don't know what uh, Lord Miller had fully in mind and what was happening, but I think that I do like. Uh, look, Ron Howard's a great, accomplished director, yeah, and mm-hmm. I do like how the movie ended up. I think it. I think there were several things that. I still think there are several things that hindered its performance in the box office, but I just don't think. I, I, and, and a lot of it had to do with uh, the, the month that came out, as well as the Hangover from Last Jedi. So. Mm-hmm. I think that um, I think now, like you said, yeah, I think now a release on Disney Plus now uh, uh, debuting in a way would have been a lot more successful. I think mm-hmm. um, yeah. because you know you got if you got it's not like a thing lacks star power. I mean sure. Donald Glover and um, yeah, Paul yeah. Bettany and Amelia Clark, Clark Harrison, yeah, Woody Har- yeah, he, um, <laughs> Daddy Newton. I mean, you yeah. got, and of course, Favreau as, yeah, you know, Rio. Yeah. I mean, you had just a big lineup, mm-hmm. and uh, they should have got should have got Saul Guerrero though. Still I know. Well, there. and that, but that's the thing. Like recently, I've, I've been seeing on Twitter a lot of um, whatever communication tweeting about Emphis Nest, you know, just mm-hmm. like that was also a kind of a breakout character yep. in, in her own right. And I think, yes, man, you could, people are, people are wanting an entire show about Emphis Nest. Yes. And I think you can, right. you can do that. You know, it's, it's just, uh, it seems like a, a, a little bit of a unique spin on, on a re- specific rebel cell, like a very niche rebel mm-hmm. cell, like Saul's partisans, you know, they, they're just the more militant version of a rebel you know a little yes. more gorilla guerrera that's right warfare but um uh, yeah that'd be i mean 
we've said it so many times. There's just so many. They've laid the seeds of so many things. Story group and and Lucasfilm. You know, it it would be easy to to pick up the ball and kind of run with it. I feel like. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure they've, I'm sure they've done, they've gone in development with a ton of these stories. Yeah. Just depends Probably. on which ones make the cut. You know, so. Okay, that's Solo. Go to watch that on Disney Plus. So that would that would technically now mean that everything that is created in the Star yeah, Wars universe true. is now on Disney Plus. Very true. So um, everything that's can well, not necessarily. I mean, yeah, everything kind of in the the. 2015 like the, the i'm trying to think of like some of the old stuff it'd be great if they put like would they ever put ewoks the ewok movies on there i know, would they ever doubt do it <laughs> or the joy even the droid cartoons but i don't know maybe they don't the, the, yeah i don't think anything like that was is on there i, I mean it may i don't know who owns the, <laughs> holds the rights to that stuff maybe yeah. 20th century still owns the maybe, rights yeah possibly but, maybe. but now they have it they have mm-hmm. it now so it's true <laughs> uh that's true it might end up the Ewok stuff, I have to think that they would eventually land on yeah. that. But, um, and why not? Why couldn't those be canon, I guess? There's no sure. contradiction in there, right? There's no continuity errors. I can't remember. It's been forever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's been forever. I mean, they, they have the... Um, they have those creatures in there, right? The uh, the Blurgs? The Blurgs, yeah. Blurgs or whatever, Blurg. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> technically they're, they're canon, so... Um, but every every movie, every TV series, it's all on there now, mm-hmm. and it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger. So, okay, so moving on to the publishing program of the Mandalorian. So that's that's kind of the, the big news that dropped, I guess, uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, the Mandalorian, of course, with every Star Wars property that comes out, there's always uh, there's always some supporting publishing uh, mm-hmm. material that comes out. This is no different for season one of The Mandalorian. Uh, two obvious books I feel like that use a company, everything is you get a ultimate visual guide, mm-hmm. which I'm looking forward to. That's going to be, of course, written still by Pablo Hidalgo. Then you've got The Art of... Mm-hmm. Uh, Mandalorian season one. I'm assuming this is going to be a lot of the art that we see at the end of the series, the credits, um, end of the shows. Of course, the covers done by Doug Chang, mm-hmm. and then you've got the adult novel version of season one, and it's written by Chris, uh, Adam Christopher. Well, that actually, that's it's an original. It is an original novel. The adult novel is going to be. It sounds like an original story. Oh really? There's a little more clarification on it, yeah. Oh, I just assumed it was just that adaptation of the season one. There was a tweet. I have to find it, but um, but uh, yeah, to find where it came from. But there, because there is a junior novelization. That's one of the yes, one of the things is a junior one. But like Penguin Random House's website is listing it as a, a the Mandalorian original novel. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Uh, but the first original novel set in the world of Star Wars Mandalorian. So that's wow. from the publisher's uh, website. Yeah, okay, well, I, yeah, that was yeah. Good. Uh, I, I was like, yeah, I was like thinking it was just a novelization at first. And then you've got you've got yeah, the junior novelization said There's like an eight by eight storybook, and uh, there's a level two reader, allies and enemies coming out. Um, and of course, there will be some inspired comics coming from Marvel and IDW. So of course, then coloring activities and all that stuff. So, a lot of stuff. Even a little golden book is coming. <laughs> I love this. Mandalorian. I do too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's yeah, that's interesting yeah. about the novel and uh, of course the yeah. visual guide and the art yeah. of. I mean, usually, like with the art of. Just in the in the past, they don't they usually wait till after the show, like the series has concluded, right? The, like for Rebels and for Clone Wars. Yes, usually wait. So it's interesting. I mean, I think that 
I guess surely there's enough content, I'm sure, to fill up an entire book. I'm talking about all the storyboards, but um, even even the Ultimate Guide, it's like, man, they are really milking. Like they're going to do one for every season, uh, probably. And keep updating it. Yeah, but I mean, it's cool. Of course, I'll. That's true. Maybe I won't. It, maybe I won't get that till the end know. of the series. That's going to be tough. Yeah, yeah. that's would be tough, but. Uh, but it's cool. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some really good stuff. Like the ultimate visual guide, I can see myself getting just for the sake of learning more of the canon. Like maybe some little trivial kind of information about yeah the world. But I mean, well, because that could be true. That actually could be true about the rebels and Clone Wars. Like I think Clone Wars came out with one, but that was prior to season seven, obviously. Yeah, and maybe even. The Lost Mission. So there's mm-hmm. stuff I'm sure that's not in the Clone Wars visual dictionary. Uh, and then the Rebels one, I feel like didn't come out till I think that I feel like the Rebels one came out before the series ended as well. So there's yeah, mm-hmm. there, there's probably some of those books that don't have everything in it, and mm-hmm. they probably need to send updates out. But but that's the publishing program. For the Mandalorians, uh, the only date I see, which is in the list of release dates I have, is the novelization is coming out December 1st. I don't think there's dates for everything else yet, unless you see anything, Case. I, th- the, I think the art of... I saw it somewhere. I think the art of, according to, again, the uh, publisher's website, Abrams Books, is uh, December 15th. Because you can you can go ahead and pre-order. That yeah, now. you're right. December fifteenth. I see that now. Yep. And uh, yeah, Phil Sostak is doing is compiling it. Yeah, the cover is Doug Chain, and the rest is by Phil Sostak. But um, and December first is the novel. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only cool. release dates I see. Yep. Interesting. So that would make sense that the novelization comes out in December, meaning that. Seems like season two will probably wrap around that time. Mm. And then this will be out there for you to continue that story, I guess. Yeah. So, so no, other notable other notable releases coming out. Uh, you have the full audio drama book of Dr. Afra. And that's actually coming out this month, July 21st. You can get that in audiobook form. That's uh, full cast. You got, did you, you got the full cast listed, I think? Yeah, was, um, last week they announced the full cast. Uh, I'll, I'll run through that real quick. I, I recognize a few of these names just because of, you know, they're all um, voice actors or, uh, you know, they, a lot of them have done audiobooks as well. But uh, Emily Wu Zeller as Afro. Jonathan Davis as Boba Fett, I recognize his name. Um, Sean Patrick Hopkins as Luke Skywalker. So some yep. of this cast character list. I don't know if we already knew all of these people, but I man, I'm just not finding out. I, I knew Luke crossed her, her path at some point. Yeah. Uh, Sean Cannon, or Keenan, maybe, but Cannon is triple zero, which debunks my theory that uh, uh, Anthony Daniels was going to be triple zero. But, yes. Uh, uh, Nicole Lewis as Sana Staros, which I think is a cool uh, character for this story. Uh, Carol Monda as Maz Kanata. Again, crazy. Uh, Ewan Morton as the Emperor. Ewan Morton's also done some, you know, I recognize him from other Star Wars stuff. Uh, Catherine Tabor as Leia Organa. So yes. you have Padme doing Leia here, which is awesome. Um, I think Catherine, has, did she play Leia in uh, The Forces of Destiny or Rebels? Ye- or is that someone else? That might have been no, someone else. I think you're right. I think she I'll was. To, I'll have possibly to correct that. myself on that if I'm wrong. But uh and then of course Mark Thompson. Uh he's playing Darth Vader. Which yes. Mark Thompson. Very Can't fun. have an audio drama without Mark Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> so are you aware are you aware of who Sana Staros is? She I mean she is um the self proclaimed wife of Han Solo. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So that was so. in the the comics, the Star, Star Wars comic series mm-hmm. that, that uh, was the first yeah. series after the the publication reboot. 
but there was a story there where she, yeah, she gets introduced and yeah, she is uh, Han's wife apparently. I'm looking real quick, Catherine Tabor. I don't doesn't see. I don't know if she did Leia in the Forces of Destiny, but she did Leia um, in the Force Unleashed game, and oddly mm-hmm. enough, Star Wars Detours. <laughs> Robot Chicken. <laughs> so. Yeah, she's done Leia before. We were like, "What is this? no? What's the worst detour? Look it up. It is awesome." Gosh, yeah, man. So. Um, that would be a cool Disney Plus thing. Was... Wasn't there a rumor that it was coming? I, Disney there's Plus? always been rumors. I think they were gonna yeah stuff. But <laughs> Man, I don't think it'll happen. ever come out. Oh gosh, yeah. unless Filoni somehow gets a hold of it and, sure. and let it out. Uh. But that's a great cast. I, I love mm-hmm. the. I love seeing Catherine Tabor. Um, yes, yeah. Doing Leia, I think that's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think that's did. also. I think that's mm-hmm. also a little bit of a foreshadow of the end of. I don't want to give away the end of Queen's Peril a little bit mm. of where that next book is going to go. And, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think she'll voice that one as well. So that would be so cool. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, she's great. <clears throat> and then moving forward, you have uh, you have Star Wars Dark Legends, which is the second book uh, from George Mann. Uh, it's called Dark Legends. The other one was Myths and Fables, I think, or Fables and Myths. Myths and Fables, uh, yeah. Uh, so that's coming out <laughs> July twenty eighth. That was uh, that was interesting storyline of those mm-hmm. other that other book. Um. Mm-hmm. Kind of uh, not necessarily. It's just stories, you know, sh- little short stories. You have they were, they're like in, in canon. Are they were they like kind of framed as like an in canon in universe fable? Is that kind of like yes. these are stories that you would hear? Yes, yes. Throughout the galaxy. Yeah. You have uh, Poe Dameron's book Free Fall coming August fourth. Mm-hmm. You've got the Clone Wars uh, story, the collection of stories there for yeah. that. Dropping August 25th. You've got Thrawn Ascendancy coming mm-hmm. September 1. You've got the Empire Strikes Backs from a certain point of view dropping November 10th. Mandalorian, we mentioned the original novel mm-hmm. there, December 1st. And then you have uh, the High Republic series starting at the first of the year. Light of the, Light of the Jedi, Test of Courage coming January 5th. And then into the dark by Claudia Gray, uh, February 2nd. So yeah. as of right now, that's your novelization, your young adult, uh, adult mm-hmm. novels. And like I said earlier, you've got comics coming back, starting mm-hmm. to come back. I think they have full force publication starts in August, but mm-hmm. you do have a couple rolling out. I think, uh, I think the bounty hunter series yeah. came dropped last week. Mm-hmm. So I got to get back into reading some comics too yeah. but and backing up a little bit on the clone wars book uh stories of light and dark they so last week really uh, star wars released um we already knew the there it's 11 authors 11 stories uh we, we've known the authors but now just got released the the stories that they're that they're telling and if if you all don't know what this book is necessarily about it's uh, Eleven stories that are essentially retellings of of Clone Wars arcs, or uh, well, actually, they're all arcs. A retelling of these arcs from the essentially from the point of view of, of one of the characters. Um, and I'll highlight a few, just some of the ones that I'm really excited about. Again, you have eleven stories, so which which yeah make up multiple episodes, but you have. Uh, you have, of course, you have Ahsoka, and it can pretty much covers every every character. But uh, uh, there's an arc about Cad Bane uh, that will be covered in this. Which anything with Cad Bane, I'm very excited about. Uh, Mother Talzin will be featured in here. Zorada Cordova, who wrote Crash of Fate, um, mm-hmm. she is doing uh, an episode. Hers covers one episode, Bounty, uh, or sorry, um, yeah, Bounty. It's the one about uh, it's one about Asajj Ventress. Her story is called The Lost Night Sister. Wait a minute. So, okay, wait. This is uh, <laughs> so Cad Bane. So this is during the Clone War still. 
Yes, in yeah, different so, points throughout the Clone Wars. So I wonder if it's it's not it's going to be the Boba Fett arc too. That that no, I don't think it's like that. No, well, so far they haven't said that. Um, these are like it like this. If you go to Star Wars's blog and you go through the article, it actually tells you what episodes these stories are retelling. Oh, so sorry. the retelling of it. Yeah. yeah. So like a, here, like a Cad Bane arc here, uh, Tom Engelberger is writing his story is called Bane's Story, and it's based on the episodes of Deception, Friends and Enemies, The Box, and Crisis on Naboo. So you have uh, uh, Cad Bane, you have some Ahsoka there. Um, so very exciting. And then, yeah, so Zorada Cordova is doing uh, Asajj one. Um, you have... Jason Fry doing one about Yoda ambush, which I believe that was the very first episode mm. uh, of Clone Wars. I think um, it was with Yoda. Yep. Yeah, this one uh, is, sounds really cool. Yoon Ha Lee is writing her stories uh, um, about. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of looking up here on my computer screen. So, um, uh, sorry, Yoon Lan Lee. His story. His story is about. The Krell arc. So mm. the, it's called the Shadow of Umbara, and it's covering darkness of Umbara, the general plan of descent and carnage of Krell. So he's that writing is a crazy arc, uh, man. And so that's why I'm like really excited to see what uh, how he's going to be retelling that. <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> it's that. It's very emotional. Uh, Rebecca Roanhorse, she is doing an arc, uh, or she's doing a story about a Asa- uh, sorry Maul. Uh, the Brothers episode. Mm. And she just wrote, um, uh, Bur- was it? Re- uh, uh, Resistance, Re- uh, Resistance Reborn. Reborn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's insane. I and mean, this is very, again, you hear Padme, you have a story about Padme. So, this is this, this could be really interesting uh, stories to just, de- <laughs> just another one to deepen your love for prequels. For the uh, Clone yeah. War mm-hmm. era, so very exciting. Very exciting, yeah. August twenty fifth for that, so I'll probably listen to that one as well. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of stories there to fill the gap before we get the Mandalorian and whatever announcements we got coming for the next couple of years of Star Wars. Um, that's the that's the novels right there. So I guess the uh, to kind of spin into a little bit of what our main topic is going to be right now. Um, I failed to mention it, I think, at the front of this episode. But uh, I, I was thinking all day today, um, because there's not a lot going on in, in the world of Star Wars to really pick at. But one thing I will pick at a little bit is uh, the Disney parks, actually. And how they are trying to reopen here in the next couple of weeks. Um, if I haven't mentioned it on here, my wife, Brooke, is a Disney travel agent. So if you need a trip booked, <laughs> you know, hit me up on Twitter <laughs> or hit her up. Uh, she's Brooke Cottingham Travel on Facebook. And, you know, today, actually, July 9th, uh, Disney actually opened up uh, uh, the reservations uh, bookings for 2020 again. So up until today, you could not book a, a Disney trip in 2020. Now you can. So that's saying something right now. That's saying something. That's saying that they anticipate uh, the safety measures that they've put in place to work. They've anticipated that they, they're going to do everything they can to keep everybody safe. You know, even though Florida sounds like they're up, you know, increases in COVID cases, um, I'm not sure how much that will affect Disney in a sense because, I mean, let's face it, the mo- most of the people that go to Disney aren't in Florida. <laughs> yeah. um, so with that in mind, I thought we'd just kind of play around a little bit and, and talk about in relation to the parks, now that the Skywalker saga is over, that we know of anyway, <laughs> uh, what can Disney, 
what can Disney parks do to either add or, you know, update what they currently have, which is Batu? Because I'm not completely sold that that Batu could just stay the way it is, which is yeah. resistance versus first order. Mm-hmm. Because if you're going to, unless you're look, unless you're truly sticking to the to the canon part of that timeline for 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 that park, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're saying this is this this area takes place between what the last Jedi and and uh, the Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. If it's going to stay in that timeline, then yes, then you could keep it the way it is. But at some point, we're going to get a lot more, a lot more Star Wars stories, mm-hmm. a lot more characters. How do they bring them into the park if it's not part of that timeline, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know what what could Disney parks do? Do is it is it having to build another place? Is it? just switching the timeline of when the setting that we are at Batu. I mean, what have you thought about any of this? Yeah. I mean, I want to say when they were, when they first were opening it, I want to say I read something that where they were, Disney was even talking about the possibility of changing stuff out. I'm not sure if I even read that. I mean, I feel like I read that, but maybe I didn't, but anyways, I, yeah, I kind of feel like it would be exciting, but I can't imagine how the logistical nightmare of changing out aspects of Galaxy's Edge to match an era, because it would make sense for it, like like the High Republic, let's say, if that just becomes the next the main, and there's there ends up becoming TV shows and movies or whatever. I feel like if there's a movie about that era then that's like kind of what dictates what could dictate the era of of the park. So let's just say like High Republic becomes that era. You know, and they all of a sudden remove Ray from the park and put in one of the new Jedi characters that we just heard of, you know, or or, or going to learn learn about. You know, it, it I can see them like I think swapping out characters that walk around would be easy enough. You know, um if they're right. if they're not guaranteed to be recognized as these new characters, but um, it it sounds really challenging to not not even not even thinking about how they would change out R- Rise of Resistance. I mean, that just that's I don't know I don't know what they're confined in. Basically, like they built did they build it specifically for the mechanics of the ride that it is. Because I know, I know it moves around, it goes up and down, and kind of around. Like, can that stay the same kind of mechanic, and yet you just change the skin of it? Is that even possible? So, yeah, I don't know. But, um, but like, let's say Doc Ondar's, you know, Olga's Cantina. Can you remove that and put in a brand new shop? Because let's say if you're going way, you know, unless they've been there forever, which I don't know if that's canon, how long they've been there. Well, I know Doc's been around for a while. Yeah, so but, like like Maz, you know, if they've been there for a thousand years, then you're pretty well covered, I think, in yes. any era. Then that's fine. But let's just, you know, maybe they've and said Batu, that already. As far as I know, Batu is a pretty old mm-hmm. settlement, even though yeah. it's on the edge of, yeah, you know, wild space or whatever. Yeah. Um, but. But Disney and publishing, all, like all the publishing companies, did such an amazing job. I think with just quickly putting out a bunch of information about this this area, this planet, with all the books. So like again, Crash of Fate, oh. Force mm-hmm. Collector. Well, actually, the Force Collector. I don't think it, that touched on Batu, but you had the Thrawn book. And you had well, yeah, Black Spire, Black Spire book. Uh, the, and so you had all those other little connections here and there. And it did such a great job because you read that and you went to the park and you have Vi Marathi walking around, you know. Yes. So it's like that's huge, and that's and that's a book character. That's not she's not in any TV shows, so that's, that's right. very unique. So again, I think the character swaps could be very easy. You know, you you are you gonna have to move the Millennium Falcon? You gonna have to remove that <laughs> if it's like 
in an era where it doesn't exist. Uh, you it's know, like, yeah. So there's actually well, here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing is I think, well, I think you touched on it that the 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 publications, you know, the, they did come out with a four a, a four issue series called uh, Galaxy's Edge, and that told of the time that Han Solo and Chewie stopped by there during the prior to the original trilogy. So they have already shown what that 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 Black Spire is a is a smuggler outpost, you know, mm-hmm. um and was a frequent location for for this kind of business. So you've shown a different era already of it. You just haven't shown it in, in live action. So yeah, right. Because I just think that the there's a if you think about the characters, you are right now. You're stuck with the sequel trilogy, right? You have Ray, you have Chewbacca, you have uh, Kylo walking around, you have First Order stormtroopers walking around. I I just can't imagine they they will if they stay like that. You'll never see Vader walking around there. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll never see. You not that they would probably. Uh, well, you would never see Darth Maul walking around there. You never see sure. um, some of these characters that they have there. Boba Fett, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess Boba Fett could be alive. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but I, I, I just, I think, I think that I gotta believe that when they built, look, the Falcon ride, I think is is easily done because you can literally move that ship and put a different ship there. That's true. And it's a whole nother ride, right? Cause that's a virtual ride, mm-hmm. but rise of the resistance, even though I think it would take a lot of money to renovate that thing. I do think that it could be skinned mm-hmm. and I think it was set up that way. Yeah. Maybe they already had, you know, obviously prepared for that. I, I think they have to, cause think about it right now. They're, they're actually. Did you read that they're changing out Splash Mountain? Um, yeah. They're reskinning that. It's going to be the same water ride. Mm-hmm. They're just changing the theme. So I, th- I think we're still a couple years away though yeah, from for anything. Sure. But I do think at some point they can reskin mm-hmm. that too and have all new fresh characters. All new, fresh rides. Even it's the same ride, but different mm-hmm. experience with it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I do think that's a possibility. Now, I also think what's a possibility is, you know, they they did a good job in saying that this is this Black Spire outpost on Bat Two, meaning. Um, well, actually, well, yeah, I think about it too that you got that Halcyon, right? You have to, you have the ship, the starship mm-hmm. that's going to be experienced, that's going to be taking you down to Batu. So I guess that could still happen and still be a different time era, mm-hmm. right? Sure. But I'm trying to think of is it weird? Could you not? I mean, now that you've established this as Black Spire Outpost on Batu, can you? Can you build another Star Wars location, but still have it on the you know what I mean in the same like, part, like canon lines with a different planet or whatever? Yes, but it's obviously the same. Can you do that? Part. <laughs> it's a different time. It's a different time era, right? Like yeah, you say you off. build. Yeah. Say you build. Um, I mean, you build a section of Coruscant, mm-hmm. and. You have you're able to fly around in like a, yeah. you know, a, a ship in the in the in the uh, traffic of Coruscant. Um, can can you do that with Batu right next door? Mm-hmm. I mean, if they <laughs> have the weird? space, yeah. No, I mean, if they have the space to, I don't know how much they can build out from what they currently have, but uh, I I don't see them adding new locations. Um, I yeah, I mean I can just see them swapping out different aspects of it, but so you don't ever yeah, you don't ever see them building I I tell you what I end up I well no I I don't think so. I, for a long time I figured they would possibly build 
their own Star Wars park, like mm-hmm. kind of like Animal Kingdom, and I, mm-hmm. like I actually thought that they would even think about doing their own park that's Star Wars themed. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's the case now. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think it'll still just live in Hollywood studios. But the fact that they've taken, you know, a lot of the area that they had for Star Wars, which is all around Hollywood studios, they actually have kind of moved all of it into what they call the launch bay there. Mm-hmm. Now, the launch bay there is simply the non Batu canon stuff. So any mm-hmm. like like you can meet Vader in there. You can meet BB-8 and mm-hmm. and Chewbacca and actually and now I don't think it is. Yeah, it's Vader now. It used to be Kylo, but now it's Vader because right. Kylo now is walking around Batu. So mm-hmm. you know you have and you have all these uh, displays and and shops and stuff over there. But anything that's canon is in Batu, right? So, yeah, like current. I I, I can see, yeah, I, I kind of do think it depends on what the movie is. So, if the movies just keep progressing forward, then I don't think it's too difficult to, and you don't have to, to do any too drastic of, of aesthetic changes. You know, you're moving forward in time, not yeah. backwards in time. So, you're not having to go back and, you know, make things like you know, make things look newer or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, let's see, like the uh, like the lightsaber building shop, you know, would they ever, like, it's hard for me to imagine them swapping out stores and shops like that, but, I mean. I think, look, I think want. what you could easily do, <laughs> I think you can easily, I think you can easily skin this to um, right around the, the original trilogy, mm-hmm. because, yeah. You could easily the Falcon's the same. You can mm-hmm. easily start having Han and, and Chewie walking around, mm-hmm. uh, which would be pretty dang cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, you could uh, at that point you need to go try to cast for. Oh my gosh! Yeah, for Han. Uh, <laughs> but you wouldn't have to change the Falcon ride really, except you change the interior of what you're doing. Right. I mean, actually, well, actually the whole coaxium thing is still viable at that point. Yeah. But you have Leia and you have Han walking around. You could even have a Luke walking around. You could then have Vader and stormtrooper, like Mm -hmm. original trilogy stormtroopers walking around. But what would be even cooler? Think about this. What would be cooler if you go back into the solo timeline Mm-hmm. Where you go about ten years before episode four, you could have Darth Maul walking around. Yeah. Could have bounty hunters walking around. Yeah. You could then change the Falcon to where it will look like Oh man. So paint right? job and add paint the, job, modify add it, add the thing. Add the, yeah. thing add the injection. Give it a whole pod. new look, right? Yeah. Now again, Rise of the Resistance, what what would you do with that ride? You sure. would have to skin it somehow and change it. But that could you can turn that into some smuggling ride. Yeah, exactly. And it would be about the same thing, you know? Yeah. So, um, and then, and then of course I would love it if they went to the prequel area, mm-hmm. prequel era where you had Anakin walking around there, oh, yeah. Obi-Wan, Padme, cause Padme was there. And, well, Anakin and Padme. Ron. Ron. Yeah. You know, uh, clone troopers walking around you know Mm -hmm. i just think you've got some opportunity there and look i kind of have the feeling they've thought about this yeah Um, i'm pretty sure i feel like i read that somewhere but uh yeah no totally i mean getting like characters yeah um that's a that's a pretty easy and inexpensive i would say i would think change but yeah talking about changing rise of resistance and all the all you know the, the couple rides that they have and all that that would be the I mean I would think well every five to seven years they could they could I, I would say every five years you could do it yeah. you know, I was just about to say probably every five at least mm-hmm. at least five and then start the change because it would probably yeah. take a good six months or so probably to yeah, change a bunch it's of stuff like gosh they would they would hopefully if they have done this if they have if they're planning this, and hopefully they planned for it to be a quick change, though, because like Rise of Resistance, how long would that have to be down? 
I know. For that's, it to, that's the only thing. A new ride. Yeah, that's the only thing. You would have to change out some some of the Different phases. And... It shouldn't be that bad though, because you're not uh, rebuilding necessarily anything. You're yeah. just replacing. And then of course, most of it's all vi- video screens, mm-hmm. so that could be easily changed out. Just like Falcon could easily be changed out. But I think it would be minor changes. Um, it would be down. But you know, they do maintenance on rides all the time that are down sure. like two or three months. Sure. Uh, constantly. So, but you know, Batu opened last year, right? So mm-hmm. maybe around 2024. Yeah, you would start changing out. Which, think about it. Obviously, you're giving everybody a reason why they had to go back. Yeah, and that's the time where we'll have the new slate of films. Yes. I uh, you know, already started. Yeah. Probably if if things don't get delayed too much. Yeah. 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 So it could be whole. It could be already be a whole new era by then of new characters yeah. and all that. Yes, because that's the thing. Is like, yeah, think about it. Five, six, seven years from now, mm-hmm. when you have kids that are five, six, seven, then right, are just now being born now, mm-hmm. and their their introduction to Star Wars is going to be those movies. Yeah, if they're going to go to Disney World and be like, "Who's Ray?" <laughs> uh, who's Chewbacca? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you have to almost cater to the new generation more so mm-hmm. because those are the ones coming to Star Wars to coming to Galaxy's Edge to see what they're seeing on the films now. I don't know. So I, yeah, I do think more and more that Star Wars is going to be at least the cast of characters will be pretty different every yeah in this next iteration coming yes. up. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. So anyway, interesting discussion. I think mm-hmm. I think that you know I don't know if we'll ever hear anything about this anything anytime soon or, but maybe I don't know. You know, uh, something like this would be more for like a D twenty three discussion with oh, I mean, for sure like Disney Park, yeah, uh, panels and all that stuff. So, um, but we never know. I'm trying to get back there later this year, so <laughs> I should have. I was gonna go in June. So I should have had another lightsaber built already and another droid. And I'm, hmm, <laughs> dang COVID. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so hopefully in December I can go yeah. and get my get Jeez. my next lightsaber. And Florida's, stuff. Florida's getting hit the worst, pretty much. One, yeah. It's like the one of the worst places, and I feel horrible for for everybody down there. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. It's crazy times. Uh, but thanks everybody for coming and mm-hmm. talking and listening to some Star Wars stuff right now. Uh, be sure to go to InsideTheForce.com uh, for all the subscriptions and still check us out on YouTube. We've got some, uh, some more videos coming out on there in the next few weeks. So all kinds of stuff. Uh, no matter if Star Wars is light or not, we're going to be here talking about it. So yes. we'll see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe and take care of each other. He's Case Cooley. Goodbye, everybody. I'm David Cottingham. May the force be with you.